All right, so happy Halloween to you. Today we're going to be talking about Batman The Long Halloween Part 2. I did a review for Batman The Long Halloween Part 1 yesterday. It is on the channel. Part 1 and Part 2 are both on HBO Max right now. I don't know how much longer they're going to be on there, but they're both on there. That's where I was able to watch them. They're also available on DVD. This is, of course, the animated adaptation of the comic book Batman The Long Halloween. Now, I just want to say that I've never actually read the original comic storyline of The Long Halloween. I have not read it. So... There's probably going to be some people who have read it who might dislike some of the changes. I don't really know what those changes are. So I'm going to be reviewing this objectively, not based on my attachment to the original storyline. Because I actually have never read the original storyline, so I don't know what really happens. But everyone was kind of telling me before I saw Part 2 that Part 1 was better. And I can kind of understand why, because Part 1 has more of the Joker... It seems like more of a focused detective story. But even then, we didn't really get the resolution of who the holiday killer was. And in this one, we do get it. It's the end of the story. A big focus of part two of Batman Long Halloween was how Harvey Dent became Two-Face. And we've seen this story told a multitude of times in multiple different movies. Batman Forever, The Dark Knight. We saw it in the season one episode, Big Bad Harv. Um, animated series in several different movies and comics. Here it's not that different, but you know, obviously his face gets burnt off and he's already got issues ahead of time. Like his Harvey Dent always had mental issues, like that he always did. It's just that he tried to be good, and, and at one point his brain just snapped. You know, one of the thing about one of the things I like about Batman villains is that they all have a very interesting psychological profile. Now, like they teased in the uh, part one. Poison Ivy does have a role in this movie, and I really did not like that. The first, like, half of this movie, or first third of it, I was not a fan of. So, ultimately, I do think part one is better, overall. But part two, like, it's got to it's good. There's a lot of good stuff in this. I'm not saying it's bad, but really, that part at the beginning, like, with the whole Poison Ivy thing, how she was kind of manipulating everything, I did not like that at all. Now, I love near the end of the film when they had that big sort of rumble with all the villains. You know, Penguin showed up, and um, Solomon Grundy wound up working for Two-Face. Like, I really like what they did with Two-Face here, because they actually made Two-Face very interesting. But one thing I noticed about Two-Face, guys, is that when it comes to Two-Face as a character, I feel like He's only interesting in his origin story. Like, when you watch The Dark Knight or Big Bad Harv, like, he very rarely has stories that are interesting, not including the comics, where it's past his origin. Like, the way that Harvey Dent becomes Two-Face is interesting. But past that, it just feels... Just not that interesting, you know, but in this movie, I like what they did with him. I like how he became Two-Face, um, and then having all the villains rumble near the end, and Batman and Catwoman how to try to stop it, you know, that was cool. I like that a lot. The Joker, of course, comes back for that scene. There's a, that big uh, breakout in, in Arkham, and then, you know, Calendar Man even got to shine more, so... I like that. I like that. This felt like this movie, even though it's unrelated to the Batman the Animated Series cartoon, it did feel like a continuation. It felt like a big season finale, if that makes sense. And so it's one of those things where I like that aspect of it. And then, like, the final scene with them on the roof, well, not the final scene, but near the end with, with Commissioner Gordon, Batman, and Harvey Dent, Two-Face, on the like the, the roof, the same place they were at the previous year, because the long Halloween is one year. Like, it starts in... Halloween, and it ends the next year's Halloween, you know, with the holiday killers. I love that scene. I love how it went back to that. And I, and again, remember, I've never read the comics. And I really thought it was interesting when they revealed who Holiday was. Like, I had a feeling it was her, Harvey's um, supposed to soon-to-be wife. I had a feeling it was her. But I didn't know for sure because she seemed so innocent. And, and, and they did a great job of kind of misdirecting you because she seemed so innocent. She seemed like somebody who would never do anything like that. And she wound up being a real, real, like, I don't want to say a psycho because she's not really a psycho. But she's kind of crazy, you know, um, and, and damaged, psychologically damaged from, you know, losing the baby. And then the whole, like, backstory with Alberto, like... 
that was pretty interesting how I went back to part one and the, the way that Batman just kind of left like because because you know ultimately it's interesting Batman did not like arrest her like you would think he would Batman instead left and she kind of like got away with it, but she was also killing people who were not necessarily good people. But that goes against Batman's code. So there were... I was a bit conflicted on that because I feel like it needed like an epilogue as opposed to like... I mean, they had a post credit scene where Green Arrow and Flash showed up at, you know, at Bruce's house, which is probably going to lead to another Justice League movie coming up or whatever they have planned. But uh, I was conflicted by the ending a little bit. You know, I liked it a lot. Like, I liked, like, the explanation. It was pretty shocking. And, like, how she's going into, like, you know, what the miscarriage or whatever did. How she, no, not, not a miscarriage, an abortion with the baby. This was a very adult. Like, they had the F word in this, right? Which, to me, is not really a big deal. Like, one F word, PG-13, whatever. But telling a story about, like, an abortion or something like that, that's a very adult thing. Like, children aren't really going to understand that. And I'm not a woman, but I know a lot of women that have had abortions, and it's it's psychologically damaging. Like, I know a woman who lost her baby at childbirth. She's a friend of mine's ex, and she's my friend too. And she has been very, very damaged since then. Losing a child will mess you up. So that aspect of the character made sense. But when you're a kid and you're watching this, yeah, you understand and you have empathy, even though she's not real. You you assume she's real because she's real in that world. But as a kid, it doesn't really hit like how damaging losing a child can be. It doesn't really hit you hard. But when you're an adult, like this movie fits better for adults. Yeah, it was animated, of course, and it's a cartoon. And there's some unrealistic aspects of it, but it hits harder as an adult because we as adults deal with this kind of stuff. Oh, and I also forgot to mention how much I like the Scarecrow and the Mad Hatter. Like, their, that, like, uh, teamwork that they did here, I like that. Like, I feel like this movie, seeing Scarecrow, the Mad Hatter, and all these other characters, this is more for, like, seasoned Batman fans. Like, if you've already seen the animated series, if you've read some of the comics, seen some of the movies, you will recognize the characters and understand what they're doing with them. If you haven't, you might be a bit lost. Like... Scarecrow's abilities and the Mad Hatter and Catwoman, like, we know these characters and this reimagining of them is kind of something that Batman fans will appreciate more. But part one, I think, was a good detective story. Part two is more like a psychological thriller. So, yes, I, I do recommend that if you, obviously, I, I'm assuming you've seen this. If you haven't, I kind of spoiled it for you. I'm sorry, but you, you need to see this movie you need to tell your friends to see it if they haven't. It's on HBO Max. Watch it on Halloween. Even after Halloween, watch it because it's really good. Thanks again. Have a great day and we'll talk soon.